Good morning. Welcome to our worship service here at the Bonner Springs United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Charles Grant. I'm pastor of Congregational Care here at the Bonner Springs United Methodist Church. And this is also a uh, United Methodist Church worship service as well. Um, our regular pastors, Andy and Catherine, are on vacation today. So you've got me, the old retired guy. And we have a very special guest speaker this morning as well. Bonnie Rupp is going to be sharing the message with us today. Andy and Catherine will be back next week, but we're going to have another very special guest speaker next week. That's going to be Nathan Burning, who is at the present time, well, was earlier this morning, preaching over at Edwardsville today. So uh, come back next week and, and enjoy another wonderful message. We also will be celebrating Holy Communion this morning at the end of the service. So for our people at home uh, watching live stream on Facebook, uh, we invite you to find some uh, a little piece of bread or something that would be appropriate, cracker or something, and a little piece of juice, some drink that would be appropriate. And for you folks who are here in the congregation, you should have received some uh, elements as you walked in this morning. If you did not, the ushers at that time will also be distributing them as well. Have a few uh, uh, announcements we'd like to make at this time. We are sponsoring a blood drive here at the church on June 15th. 11 to 4 o'clock. This uh, is called the Royals Blood Drive. If you come and donate, donate blood, you'll get a Royals t-shirt or a hat. And uh, you can get onto Facebook, our, church, our page on Facebook, and find out how to register for that blood drive. Our Monday morning Bible study will be starting tomorrow morning, so come on down. Um, let's see, does that start at 9 o'clock? Is that correct? 9 o'clock. All righty. Our, uh, things are opening back up here at the church. Our United Methodist men met yesterday, and we had 10 people in attendance for that. Uh, we have a Sunday school class that's meeting in the fellowship hall. They had 11 people for that this morning. Uh, and we're going to be having a garage sale like we normally do in the summertime, August 11th through 14th. So gather your stuff up. But please, no heavy furniture, exercise equipment, or anything like that. Uh, as we get order, older, our backs get weaker and so please <laughs> also we'll be having vacation bible school july 12th through 16th and the youth are going to be on a mission trip uh, it's kind of local here doing mission work in the area june 28th to july 2nd those are the announcements for today so let us begin our service of worship as we turn to our opening hymn which is number 400 in the hymnals or should be on the screens up here come thou fount of every blessing and i'll get the mic back to our drummer To arrive at home, 
back on. You may be seated. This time we invite our children to come up for our children's message that our good uh, children's leader Susan Linegar will be sharing with us today. It's where children belong. Welcomed as part of the worship be throng. Good morning. How is everybody? Good. You good? Hi. What do you have, Candace? What is that? <gasps> that is so pretty. I love how it goes with my outfit. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's blue and it's very nice. So everybody looks really happy this morning. Are you guys in a good mood? Are you having fun? The sunlight and God's beautiful world greeting us in the mornings. It's so exciting, isn't it? Hi, Candace. Hello, Wallace. I just, this is so much fun to have everybody up here with me. Can you tell I've missed you guys? I just want to sit and talk. Is that okay? <laughs> Whoops, we lost another one. There they go. Well, I have in here a bag. And this is a very special bag. It can be really, really heavy sometimes. And do you think it's very heavy right now? I'm kind of having to work to hold it up. I don't know. You think my bag has anything in it? There's nothing in there. Nothing in there. There's nothing in there. So it's not very heavy right now. But you know what? I think I'm going to call this my worry bag. My worry bag. So when I start worrying and I think, oh no, what am I going to do? Then I'm going to try to think, I'm going to put it right in that bag. And then you know what I'm going to do with the bag? I'm going to say, God, here's my bag. Take my bag and make everything okay. And you know, God does that for all of us. So all we have to do is, if we get worried, just think, God's with me. Jesus is here in my heart and taking good care of me. And this is so pretty. I want to go under there, too. Uh-oh. Did you bump? Yeah. Well, now you've learned what marble feels like on your head. Okay, we don't need to do that lesson again, Mom. We did that. Okay. I, th I think Candace has a boo-boo to show. Mm -hmm. There she goes. Okay. What, we still have one in there? Okay. Well, hello. <laughs> I don't feel like this group has a whole lot of worries. I think we're pretty good. But think of something that maybe kind of scares you a little bit. Do you have something, Eli, that scares you a little bit? Bad guys breaking in. Oh, bad guys breaking in. Ooh, yeah, bad guys. That's a good one. Sometimes at night when you're asleep, I bet you kind of think like, what if, what if this happens, or what if that happens, or oh no, and then maybe it doesn't make you sleep. Maybe you think, oh no, something's happening, right? Well, guess what? You can get your bag. You don't have to have a real bag. It can be a pretend bag. And you put your worries in it, and you say, God, here's my bag of worries. I'm going to hand them over to you. And I will tell you something, kids, this gets harder as you get older. <laughs> you would think we'd get better at it, but we're not. And that's something that I want to tell all the big kids, too, that our worries are as heavy as we let them be. God can pick up the slack. God will hold the worries with us in our bag, in our hearts, in God's hands, in Jesus' life. All of those ways are how we get through our lives, making things better for others, making things better for the world that we're in, so that we don't have to worry about all those other little things. So you just say, God, take care of my family. 
make sure nobody comes in at our house tonight. And you say, God, all that other stuff I'm worried about, please help me to know that it's going to be okay. You don't need a bag to put them in. All you need to do is just close your eyes and say, God, be with me. Help me out a little bit. You don't even have to close your eyes. That's just my secret to you. So do you guys want to say a quick prayer with me? Okay. Dear God, please be with these beautiful children as they go through their week. Please take their worries, put them in the bag of joy that you have given us that is our life and the people that we love and the people who will take care of these beautiful children. Thank you, God, for all of these blessings, and please be with them as they go through this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys have a great week. I'll see you next time, and don't worry. Be happy. We'll reshuffle the kids up here. And uh, Bonnie is going to be talking about youth this morning. And so we decided it would be most appropriate if we had a youth read the scripture passage. So I invite Max to come forward this time as she is going to share with us this morning's scripture passage, which is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. <laughs> come on up, Max. The body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we are all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves, slaves or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special, special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division of the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Thank you. All right. The word of God for the people of God. And thank you, Max. Um, um, yep. Here, why don't we give this back to? Okay. Oh, I hope that doesn't fall. All right, say a little prayer that this mic stays in place. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Yeah, we did okay. Um, like Charles said, Pastor Pastors Andy and Catherine are on a much needed vacation, so they have um, invited me to give the message this morning. And I come before you guys with a double sense of responsibility because. Not only am I giving the message, but I'm talking about one of our church's most precious commodities. That's our youth. And um, specifically the teenage ones, that's the ones I'm dealing with. But we do have a lot of littles in this church, too, that have been popping up, um, as we saw earlier. So let me first begin by introducing myself. My name is Bonnie Rupp. I've been attending Bonner Springs United Methodist Church for a little over two years now, about as long as my daughter Maisie has been on the planet. And when I first walked through the doors of this church, I had a broken heart and a wild, desperate hope that God would meet me here and somehow redeem the broken pieces inside of me. And you know what? He did. No, we're Methodists and we're not very charismatic, but can we like an amen for how faithful he did? <laughs> so, 
Um, what I've found here is the body of Christ. And I think the heart of this church really is for the people in it and for the people in the greater community. I'm blown away by all of the special uh, activities and things that we rally for the community. We're talking about um, the garage sale. We talk about, I think, when we go back to school, we do back to school drives, the Halloween closet. There's a lot of really great things we do for the community around us. And this morning, I want to talk about that specific community of the youth and some great things that we want to do for the youth here. Um, and I know it, when I first came here, I was told that actually not that long ago, we were considered a dying church. Um, but God has this thing about like taking dead stuff and bringing it back to life. It's like he can't help himself. Uh, and so what God did is he took a church on the brink of shutting its doors and he swung them wide open because he knew that broken people like me needed a place to come in and find the body of Christ. So the past few weeks, we've been talking about the kingdom of God. And last week, Pastor Catherine asked us, what does the kingdom of God look like in your life? And I don't know if you've taken some time to think about that. For me, the answer was automatic. Um, it's people. To me, the kingdom of God is the body of Christ working together, loving each other, and serving our neighbors. And I'm gonna circle back around to this metaphor of the body of Christ, but I wanna just share a little bit more about myself. I'm also a high school English teacher, so teenagers are very near and dear to my heart. Daily, I witness the monumental ebbs and flows of adolescent emotions, um, and yes, Sometimes it seems like they find a bazillion tiny little ways to frustrate me. And there are days when I'm afraid that their eyes might never return from the recesses of their head after they roll them at me when I say, put away your phone for the 20th time. But I also don't believe that it's possible to spend time with teenagers in their world and not love them. I have seen some of the most beautiful extensions of grace and forgiveness occur between two students who were proclaimed mortal enemies. And I have listened to conversations about controversial issues that were productive and thoughtful because they were founded in genuine curiosity and respect. And I think that we adults have a lot we can learn from our youth. And in case you didn't know, we have some really awesome youth right here in this church. Pastor Charles mentioned it earlier. One of them preached at Edwardsville. He's going to preach here next Sunday. Um, we have Max, who came up and shared the scripture with us. Great youth. And I want to invite you this morning to get to know them, to spend some time in their world, and ultimately to love them. We're in the process of revamping what the youth ministry looks like here at Bonner Springs. And we have this wonderful dilemma. It keeps growing, so we need to grow with it. Because if we fail to do this, we risk stunting the growth of this church. And we also risk missing out on a huge blessing that God wants to give us. So, we've been given a second chance to show Bonner Springs and Edwardsville and the community beyond just what a beautiful and powerful thing the body of Christ is when it's in action. I want to return back to the scripture today. Remember, I said I'm an English teacher, so you didn't think you guys would get off that easily, did you? Right? Um, I'll go easy on you. I know some people just broke onto a cold sweat. <laughs> There'd be a quiz. No. Um, <laughs> so not today. Maybe later. Uh, all right. I want to dig into the text a little bit more. So 1 Corinthians 12 is a chapter all about spiritual gifts. And it acts as a prelude to one of the most famous chapters in the Bible um, where we find often quoted verses on love. Maybe they sound familiar. Love is patient. Love is kind. And I don't think it's an accident that Paul frames this beautiful picture of love with a discussion of spiritual gifts. Because in chapter 14, he goes right back to talking about spiritual gifts. So to me... It reinforces the idea that above all else, love is a verb. And we love each other best when we are operating as part of the body of Christ. Let's reread 
verse 12. The body is a unit. Though it is made up of many parts, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. We are the body of Christ. And that connects us to anyone who's ever believed that Jesus is the real deal. Wherever in time and space that is, and that's a lot of people. And it's often easy to feel maybe we're insignificant in this massive group of people. Um, maybe you wonder if your actions or inactions even really matter. But let's take a look at verses 15 through 18. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, it would, where would its sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, it would look really weird, first of all. And where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. So you matter. What you do matters. I'm a firm believer that even the smallest, most insignificant, trivial-seeming interaction can cause kingdom-sized ripples in someone's life. So your pinky toe. Maybe you're a little stubby, kind of awkward, never quite sure how to paint your nail. I'm referring to my own feet here, just so you guys know. Um, the fact is, we still need you. You play an important role in keeping our balance. And if we were missing you, we would all be off kilter. There are committees in this church whose sole purpose to me seems to be to appear invisible. We don't necessarily see them in action, but if our hospitality people were to just suddenly decide they didn't belong because they weren't as flashy as the choir, I promise you, we would feel that loss. Let's look at verse 19. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. So Paul encourages those of you who might feel like you don't have a lot to offer because you might not fit into the typical visible ways that we see people serving the church. But it is that diversity of abilities that makes the body stronger as a whole. In fact, Paul has words for anyone prideful enough to presume their position in the body is more important. Verses 21 through 24. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it. And this is just so typical God. He's always inverting our fleshly sense of hierarchy, right? The last shall be first. And why does he do this? Well, verses 25 through 26. So that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. No one should ever feel less than another fellow brother and sister in Christ. No one should feel less important because they don't play an instrument or because maybe they have a debilitating fear of public speaking. God can still use you. Look at Moses. No one should feel excluded because they have a health issue or family circumstances which might prevent them from participating in certain events. And no one should feel looked down upon because they are younger or haven't achieved certain socially constructed milestones yet, if ever. We are made up of many parts, but are one body. If one part suffers, every part suffers. If one part is honored, we don't resent them for getting something that we don't have. No, every part rejoices with it. 
There's a communications professor named Brian Kammerzelt at the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago, and he has some pretty convicting things to say on what it really means to be the body of Christ. Most of that is for a whole other message. But I just want to share this one little nugget from him that really stood out to me. He writes, Within the community of Christ, of Christ, among the fellowships of believers, no one should feel alone. The degree to which this is true in any given community should be the barometer for whether or not a Christ-like community is being expressed. And I like this picture of taking our spiritual temperature. How well are we including all of the people who walk in through those doors? Please, please, don't misunderstand me. I'm not here to lecture you, okay? I specifically begin this message with saying, how this church has welcomed me wholeheartedly. Because I think we're on the right track. I really do. I just want to invite you to reject any comfortable feelings of, "Eh, we're doing good enough, huh? Because that is when we get into the danger zone. That is when we risk stunting our growth. And that is when we risk falling into the lukewarm category. And if you haven't read Revelations, we don't want to be that church. So we are growing. And through our youth ministry, we have the potential to grow even more. But that growth is only possible if the body of Christ here embraces its many parts and steps up to put our love and the love of Christ into action. So what does growing look like beyond the metaphor? Well, the big part is your physical bodies here helping out. Um, showing up to minister to the youth in the ways that God has equipped you to act. I want to take a really brief, informal survey here. Um, so if the statement I, says, if I say applies to you, then raise your hand. And my people who are worshiping with us at home, um, maybe you could leave a comment to just say, yep, that's me. Uh, but I'm curious, how many of you are parents to children, infants through pre-K? a few. Okay, I fall in this category too. Okay, how many are parents to elementary students? Okay, parents to, let's see, those of you who are blessed and highly favored to have teenagers right now. Yes. (laughs) All right. Um, How many of you have grown kids but no grandkids yet? How many of you are grandparents to kids of any ages? Okay. Last question. How many of you at some point in your life have, acted, have been a parent to or acted as a parent figure to someone, period? That's, that's pretty much all of us. Um, I think it's pretty clear that we have a vested interest in serving the youth of this church and this community. They, too, are indispensable parts of the body of Christ just like you, just like me. Unlike us more seasoned members, they lack the wisdom and forethought that comes with time and driver's licenses, honestly. Um, So this is where we need you guys to step up. There is something inside of you that Max needs. There's something inside of you that Olivia and Tyler need. There's something inside of you that my two-and-a-half-year-old daughter needs. Our children need spiritual moms and dads. They need spiritual grandpas and mimis, especially those whose physical parents are no longer with us or are no longer up to the task. We need people to step up spiritually to fill those gaps in their lives before they fill it with some earthly thing that will break their hearts. Many youth are bored and need a safe place to connect. Let's be that place. We have a full summer planned for our youth here with the idea that we can draw more youth from the community who need that safe place to land. Uh, You all should have gotten a colorful calendar as you walked in, and if you didn't, would you please grab one on your way out? We have this colorful calendar, and it lists the the events that we have going on here. If you don't have a youth, but maybe have a neighbor that has a youth, 
take a couple home, maybe pass them out. I, we, we print out a whole bunch just with the hopes that you guys would grab a few and distribute them to people who you know have teenagers that need that safe place to land, who need something to do this summer. Um, and after the year that we've had, I think we all desperately need to connect with people, right? The teenagers more so than anyone. They've had a rough year, just like you and I. Um, so grab one of these calendars. But I cannot emphasize enough that most of these events, specifically the ones on Wednesday, won't be possible unless we have volunteers to help run those events. So no volunteers, no events. I've created some sign-up sheets. When you guys leave, there's three sign-up sheets out in the lobby. We need people to just be bodies in the room, to help uh, chaperone, but also just to help talk with, communicate with the youth um, at these events. And so there's a sign-up sheet for volunteers slash chaperones. If you want to come see what Glow Night's all about, sign up. Come on, join us. Um, we also need people to drive. Uh, so if you have like one of those mega passenger vans, one of those Tahoes and the minivans, if you have one of those, and you're like, sure, I could take a few people. Um, come join us for mini golfing. Come join us for, we're gonna go to the thrift store and get crazy outfits and then go roller skating. Um, it's a lot of fun. So please, if you feel a little tug at your heart, please don't ignore that. Take that risk. Sign up. Help us out. If you're like me and an introvert and you'd rather chew your foot off than stand and talk to strangers about you, God knows what, then we need people to help prepare meals. Um, we want to create a weekly meal rotation um, for youth group every week so that kids can come and we can feed them spiritually but also feed their bellies more than just snacks like potato chips. We want them to have a home-cooked meal. So there's lots of different ways we can serve. If you're still kind of not sure, I have these little bookmarks that we made, and you're like, I don't know, I need a little time to process and think about it. That's fine. Take a little bookmark. There's a QR code. If you scan this, it'll take you to a Google form, which has a form that you can fill out and say, I've thought about it, and I would like to be on the rotation for meal prep. Or I've thought about it, and I don't know how many weeks I can commit to being at youth group, but I would like to come when I'm able to. Let us know. And lastly, we also need some funding um, so that the students aren't excluded from events because of financial reasons. If you feel like you're able to help in this way, maybe it's difficult to physically be present at these events, but you can financially help us, would you make a note on your offering for youth? And we'll make sure that that fund goes specifically to making sure that they have the safe place to land, making sure they have safe activities to keep them busy during the summer making sure that they have safe people to connect with. And lastly, we need prayer. Uh, I know some of you guys are prayer warriors out there for us. Um, please, please keep us in your prayers as we undertake this new adventure with the youth ministry. Pray that God gives us wisdom. Pray that God just shows us what it is we need to do to help better serve the youth here. If you're not sure where to begin, I would just say, take the risk, show up. God will take it from there. Thank you all.
love for me who the sun sets free always free indeed I'm a child of God yes I am free at last he has ransomed me his grace runs deep While I was a slave to sin Jesus died for me Yes, he died for me Who the sun sets free Always free And if you're at home watching online, this is the time you need to get the uh, little piece of bread or cracker and a little piece of juice. And if you're here in the sanctuary, if you did not pick up one of the little communion things on the way in, the ushers are going to be going up and down the, uh, uh, the aisle here and we'll be able to hand you some. And if I can get Oren to back the camera out just a little bit and show the uh, elements down here, I thought, well, well, even though we can't share these, we still at least can have the elements in our presence as we do this. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread. And he gave thanks to God. And he broke the bread. And he passed it to his disciples and said, Take and eat this, for this is my body which is being shared for you. As often as you eat this, do so in remembrance of me. Likewise, after the, cupper, after the supper, he took the cup, he blessed it, passed it to his disciples and said, Take and drink this, all of you, for this is my blood which is being poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins, to establish a new covenant, one that will reach through all, to all people. And as often as you drink this, do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, you are the creator of everything. You are the redeemer of everything. We confess before you our sins and our need for your forgiveness. And we rejoice in your love that is given to us, your Son, our Lord and Savior. As we receive these elements today, may we become the living body of Jesus Christ, reaching out to a world to ensure that nobody feels alone, that each person that comes into our sanctuary can feel the very presence of your love, and that each person that we come in contact with outside of this sanctuary can also feel that love, especially children and youth and every adult. For all this we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And if you can get your little containers open. I, I kind of cheated. I pre-halfway undid my <laughs> The body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Our ending song today will be up on the song boards up here. I don't think it's in our hymnals. Uh, with every act of love by, who did this one? Jason Gray. Yeah, Jason bon Bonnie, Gray. Bonnie picked it out for us. So okay, kind of yeah. go along with it. It fits very well with yes. the message today. With every act of love. Oh, that, I guess I need to return this back to our drummer. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and stand as you're able.
I love that song because of the image of us being those open doors for God's love to walk through. So, may the God who is able to do infinitely more than we could ever imagine bless you today as you go out with your family and your friends. And I pray that he would show us ways that we could be those open doors to his kingdom. Amen. God bless, guys. Thank you.